So here we have a typical scenario where we have a piece of material being loaded with a false F. Now I've given you some information relating to this scenario and quite often an engineering type question would be a more descriptive type question. So although here I've specified that the force is 185 kilonewtons and I've specified that the length of the material is 2.6 meters and so on, this might be wrapped up in a wordy question. So it might say a piece of engineering material is 2.6 meters long. It's subjected to a force of 185 kilonewtons and so on. So one of the things that is important to be able to do is to read a question and interpret the information. What I would always encourage you to do is list all of the information that the question gives you as you read through the question. So in my example there, a piece of material 2.6 meters long, I would write L equals 2.6 meters on the left hand side of my page is subjected to a force of 185 kilonewtons. I would then write F equals 185 kilonewtons on the left hand side of my page. What I want is a full list of all of the information from the question. Here I've got the width of the piece of material B, I've got the depth of the piece of material D, I've got the failure stress of the material 220 megapascals and I've got the elastic modulus of the material 190 gigapascals. So I've extracted all of the information from the question. In the top right hand corner, I've specified what I'm looking for, tensile stress, strain, and change in length for the material. As we have the failure stress of the material here, we can also calculate our factor of safety. So let's begin by ensuring that all of our variables are in SI units. And this is where metric prefixes are important. So we've got the length of the material is 2.6 meters. That length is already in the SI units of meters. So we don't need to do anything with that one. We've then got a force of 185 kilonewtons. Now hopefully you recall that kilo equals a thousand. So 185 kilonewtons is 185,000 newtons. So now that is in SI units. We then have the width of the piece of material. Well the width is 50 millimeters, but that isn't in SI units. To convert millimetres to metres, we divide by a thousand, and dividing 50 by a thousand gives us 0 0.05 metres. We need to do the same with the depth, 30 millimetres divided by a thousand is 0 0.03 metres. So those two have been converted. Next we have the failure stress of the material, and here we have megapascals. Well mega is 10 to the 6 or million. We can write this two ways. We can write it as 220 times 10 to the 6 pascals because pascals is our SI units or we can write this as 220 million pascals. So once again that's now in SI units. And finally, we have the elastic modulus. Well, the elastic modulus here is 190 gigapascals. There comes a point where you no longer want to be writing all of the zeros on the end of these numbers. So giga is 10 to the 9. So we have an elastic modulus of 190 times 10 to the 9 pascals. Now, once again, you could write 190 billion or 190 with nine zeros on the end. But as I said there, there comes a point where you don't want to be writing out all of the zeros. So now we have our force in SI units, we have our width and depth in SI units, we have our failure stress and our elastic modulus all in SI units. Now it's simply a case of plugging those numbers into our formulas. The first thing the question asks us to calculate is the tensile stress, sigma t. We learned previously that sigma t is force divided by area and providing we have our force and our area in SI units is simply a case of plugging in those values. The area of this piece of material is just going to be the width times the depth. It's a rectangular cross section. So our stress becomes 185,000 for the force over the area which is the width times the depth. 0.05 times 0.03. Therefore, the stress on this piece of material that's being subjected to that force is 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 pascals. 
That's come straight out of my calculator display. I'm not going to leave it in that form. Remember that megapascals was 10 to the 6 pascals. If we wanted to convert that answer there into megapascals, then we would need to move our decimal place back six decimal places. So when we say megapascals, what we're saying is how many millions of pascals we have. So we have 123.3 megapascals to one decimal place. There is a slight trick to this. On your calculator, if you press the button that says ENG for engineering, it will convert that number to either kilo, mega or gigapascals. Now pressing that button has given me 123.3 times 10 to the 6. So I now know 10 to the 6 is megapascals. The next thing the question asked us to calculate was epsilon. And previously I told you that epsilon was changing length over original length. Well you can probably see that we have a problem. We don't know the change in length of that material. But what we do know is the original length up here of 2.6 metres, L0. But I'm not going to be able to use that formula because there's two unknowns. I don't know epsilon and I don't know delta L. But there's another formula we can use. We can use what we know about elastic modulus because elastic modulus is tensile stress over strain. I've already calculated my tensile stress, 123.3 times 10 to the 6 pascals, and I already know my elastic modulus. So I need to rearrange that equation to make epsilon the subject. Well, I can do that in two steps, and if you're unsure what I'm doing here, I strongly recommend that you refer back to the rearranging equations tutorial. But in two steps, I'm going to multiply each side by epsilon. So epsilon's going to go up there, and I'm going to divide each side by E, so E is going to go down there. What I'll be left with then is epsilon equals tensile stress divided by elastic modulus. There are a number of different ways of rearranging that equation. So now to finish this off, I have epsilon equals tensile stress. Now here's the important thing. The tensile stress must go back into the equation in Pascal's. So 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Or I could have put that into standard form. Divided by the elastic modulus, which is 190, 10 to the 9. And running that through my calculator gives me an epsilon value of 6.49 times 10 to the minus 4. So as we can see there, epsilon is a tiny value, 0.000649, if we was to remove that from standard form. And epsilon doesn't carry any units. So I'm just going to clear a little bit of space. And the information that I need in order to finish this question was the original length of the material, which we said was 2.6 metres. And the failure stress of the material, because we're going to calculate the factor of safety, which was 220 times 10 to the 6 pascals. Now I'm going to calculate the change in length of the material and the way that I'm going to do that is to refer back to our formula for strain which said that the strain was the change in length over the original length. Well I've calculated strain 6.49 times 10 to the minus 4 down here so what I can do with this formula here is times each side by the original length, or L0. Times L0 each side. And I'll get delta L, the change in length, is epsilon times L0. So plugging in my values, I'll get delta L equals epsilon 6.49 times 10 to the minus 4 times the original length. I'm just going to put this in brackets so that I remember it's in standard form. And the original length is 2.6 metres, giving me a change in length of 1.69 times 10 to the minus 3 metres. 
Now it's quite hard to visualize what 1.69 times 10 to the minus three meters looks like, but we can times that by a thousand to get the deflection in millimeters. And what that's equivalent to is 1.69 millimeters. So we had a piece of material that was 2.6 meters long. It's now 2.6 plus an additional 1.69 millimeters long. So it hasn't stretched a great deal, but the point is that it has stretched. I'm just gonna finish this question off by calculating one more thing, and that's the factor of safety. So F of S. And the factor of safety is just the failure stress of the material divided by the tensile stress that the material's under. We've got 220 times 10 to the six Pascals divided by the one, two, three megapascals, or one, two, three point three times ten to the six, and that will give us a factor of safety of one point seven eight. And in engineering terms, that's a relatively low factor of safety, but it indicates that that material probably won't fail. And the reason it probably won't fail is because we're stressing it to 123 megapascals, but it's capable of withstanding 220 megapascals. Once again, it's really important to reiterate that we must work in SI units throughout these types of questions.